Hello and welcome to my little mini-series about Life Control 2. I was asked if I could do a tutorial on how to use it because there's actually only a PDF document that explains how to set it up, but not specifically how you can use it. And there's quite a lot of little buttons and hidden features. And I'm going to show that to you in the next four videos. This time we're going to start with the launch view. And this is already chosen. That is just like the session view grid in life that you know from the APC40, for example, or Launchpad, or of course, Push. So you've got the tracks that are titled as well, and the clips. They're named just like in life, and color just like in life. And you see where the stop buttons are there. And on the right, in grey, you have the master track where you can launch scenes. So we can just click on press any clip to launch it, or we can launch the whole scene. And down here you have the button show stops. When you press that, you can stop either individual tracks or the playing clips on that track or all. Right, so then first up we have here transport. When you press that, you get an overlay and here you can choose the launch quantization. Let's keep it on one. You can choose the record quantization. I'll keep it on none for now. Um, then you've got stop, play. That's actually global record. And overdub is now session record because the labeling is still like in Life 8. And um, And you get follow, so you, you could follow in life, see where it's going. Uh, you can turn on the metronome. You actually have to press that twice to turn it back off. Uh, you've got a tap button, so you can tap out the tempo, or you can nudge the tempo by one BPM with minus or plus each. Let's close that again. And here at the bottom of each track, you have two buttons. One's called Strip and one's called Effects. When you turn that on, then you can mute the track, unmute, solo it, arm it, choose the send. And here you have an encoder, so you can dial in the amount for the, that you want to send into the return. And here you can choose press send, and then here right now B delay is chosen. But we could also choose reverb, and then dial that in. Let me just close that quickly and just start that. Here you can really hear the delay on it. Press send again to turn it off. Okay, and then you can choose if you want to set it to A or B. For crossfading, you have the crossfader down here. Crossfader here. And then at the bottom you have the monitoring settings. By default, it's set to auto. You can set it to off or in as well. And then, of course, the fader for the volume and the panning as well. 
Right, so you have that for each track. And here at the bottom right, you have all strips FX. When you press that, you can either turn on all channel strips for the individual tracks or the effects. So let's just open maybe this effects on oh, no, this. So here, when you press that, you can always choose which device you want to change the controls for. So let's choose the glitch machine. There you have the macros mapped. As you can see, or if I choose the impulse, then it just lists the settings, how it thinks it should be right, and then you can scroll through them as well. And press FX again to close it. Then down here at the bottom, it's actually already turned on, you've got help. So each time you press something, so for example, I'm going to press select now, it tells you what you can do. A little info text. And um, yeah, the master track also has a strip button that only shows panning, <coughs> panning and the volume control. And that's the presets, which actually allows you to store snapshots. So for example, let's say I'm going to start this scene. Then press preset, press store, and then press one. And then when I leave that again, and start something else. can just recall it. Here you can scroll through the tracks and the scenes, right? There's not more scenes in here right now. Um, and then you get the settings button. There you've got enlarged uh, if you want to have linear or polar knobs. By default, it's turned off. Then if the volume should be set to 0 dB as a limit, or if you want to reinitialize life control tool. And then you've got the modulate tab where you can choose if play trick is all balls in recorder. That's by default on. Also shows you the battery life. OK. And then last, but definitely not least, we have the select button here, at the bottom. And when you press that, you can, for example, oh, I think it was too slow, press that, choose what you want. So now I've chosen the first track and it gives me the play layout. I'm gonna go back to launch and show you that you can actually also choose individual clips to work with. And in this case, we're sent to the sequencer. You can also see the notes already. And yeah, that was the first video of the mini series. And I hope you found it useful. And I'll see you next time. Bye.